Good evening, members of the Council and everyone here today. Uh, I begin by acknowledging that we are in unceded Coast Salish territory, the traditional territory of the Scottish, Muslim, and Celtic First Nations. My name is Kathy Schmiesen, and I have been a long time volunteer of the Powell Street Festival Society and have been one of many volunteers involved with the work of the downtown Eastside Lab community through our shared seat. However, the Powell Street Festival Society um, is the money that's only through that directly to Mary Council. And today I'm here to speak as a member of the public at large, and all views expressed here are completely my own. Um, just before I comment on the draft plan itself, I would still just like to thank all of the city staff, especially Tom Whiteman, as well as all the members of the lab committee for their hard work and dedication um, to an incredibly um, difficult process. Uh, and although I'm not a resident of the downtown east side, I feel a strong connection to the neighborhood. My grandfather was the minister at the Japanese United Church that used to stand at the corner of Powell and Jackson. So my dad and his siblings grew up in the neighborhood. And Powell Grounds, or Oppenheimer Park, was their front yard. That is, until their family was interned in 1942. And my mother's family was also in turn, with coming from Collingwood to attend both the church and the Vancouver Japanese Language School, the only building in the neighborhood that was returned to the Japanese main community after the war. All of the property, including many buildings in the downtown east side, were confiscated and sold by the government to pay for the cost of their internment. So when we talk about the draft plan, we must talk about it in a historical and political context. And I'm grateful to Grace A. Thompson an internment survivor, for speaking so eloquently about this already. Now is the time to stop the cycle of displacement. I stand here today with the low-income and marginalized communities of the downtown east side who are trying to remain where they have lived for decades, where they have struggled, to, where they have struggled built, and fought for the vibrant community that they have now, where they feel acceptance and belonging and a strong connection to their neighbors and friends, and where they can get the support they need unimaginably challenging and stressful times. The city has acknowledged that it needs to protect the area from future injustices, so I agree that it should implement the 6040 housing policy and the DEOD for the potential social housing that this will provide, as well as the slowing of development and no condos in the area, which is crucial in trying to keep land values low and provide more time to find more funding for more social housing. However, the 30-year plan falls short of what's needed immediately. It's a long way from being the death knell to businesses that is being voiced by some. It will require that the city revise the de definition of social housing in the plan to be housing <coughs> by government and nonprofits at the welfare shelter rate, or 30% of income, in order to ensure that the poorest people, including families and seniors, have a place to live. And in order to do that, in the city, it needs to address the 5,000 units that are needed today, not in 30 years from now. So the increase, we need to increase the social housing requirements in the Hastings East area and the rest of the downtown east side, not just the DEOD. And I also support the call for an Aboriginal Healing and Wellness Center in the neighborhood as a quick start um, action in the plan. This year, in this year of reconciliation and knowing the atrocities faced by residential school survivors, this is a small ask from the Aboriginal community in the neighborhood. As well, I'm pleased to see that the plan includes actions to increase the recognition of the Japanese Canadian communities, arts, culture, and heritage in the neighborhood. I ask that you also were to find a building in the area for the Japanese Canadian community as a way to give true meaning to the apology for the city's role in the internet that was given just last September right here in this room. However, I reject any use of the revitalization of Japantown as any kind of excuse for gentrification that would result in the displacement or exclusion of the low-income community that lives there now. Human rights before heritage must be the priority. And I believe that if the city commits to listening to and working with the community, we can have both human rights and heritage in this social justice zone where so many rights have already been fought for and won. Lastly, I ask the city invest the staff and resources that will ensure there, there is continuity between now and the implementation of the, whatever the final plan is, <coughs> so that the low income community and current lab committee members have a say in what actually happens in the neighborhood and ensures that adequate social housing is built. Thank you. Woo!